Welcome to Forgotten Hollywood. Well, I just got back from Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part 1, and I thought I would give it a quick and honest review. I must say, it's nice to have an action movie that is just an action movie. It's diverse without beating over the head with it. The women are strong without being invincible. The dialogue is natural and witty. The acting is great, and the plot actually makes sense. Do you realize how rare it is for all those to be found in the same movie after the year 2014? Seriously, though, this movie was good. Was it the best movie I've ever seen? No. Was it the best Tom Cruise movie I've ever seen? No. Was it better than the last few movies I've seen in theaters? Yes. A hundred times yes. I'll include links to the reviews for those movies in the description. Now, without giving spoilers, let me explain why this movie is so good. Tom Cruise. I'm serious. Tom Cruise is one of the last, if not the last, true action stars. As we saw last year with Top Gun Maverick and this year with Mission Impossible, this is a guy who not only cares about the craft, but he cares about the audience. He knows that political messaging can be part of an action movie, as long as it is still an action movie. This film takes an entertaining story and weaves in real-world topics and issues. It's all natural, nothing forced or awkward. This is how you address social issues in a movie. It's really not hard, if you know how to write. Speaking of writing, the dialogue is probably my favorite part of this movie. From the threats to the banter, it just flows. Each character has their own voice and add to the story. I also noticed that the support characters were limited. We weren't trying to follow too many storylines or subplots. Is that to say this was the Ethan Hunt story and everyone else was just sidelined? No. While Tom Cruise was the star, the rest of the casting and character development was spot on. The others got enough screen time for the audience to know who they were and what they were doing there without being pulled out of the action. The pacing for this movie actually surprised me. After watching so many movies that dragged on and on, this one jogged along at a good pace, keeping you engaged and invested. The visuals were good, although they used the same sort of tricks that the other movies this year have done, such as murky underwater scenes and using weather to limit visibility. The only difference is, this movie made it work in favor of the story. The limited visibility was used the same way that old movies use shadows, making things appear and disappear. I don't think I've seen the technique done better. Another thing that surprised me was that the rating was purely for action. As with any Mission Impossible movie, there was a good amount of peril and some death on screen. But that's where it stopped. Other than some vague references to a possibly physical relationship, there was really nothing sensual. There wasn't enough foul language to register with me, just old-fashioned wit and humor. In short, it was a well-crafted, well-balanced action flick, one I highly recommend. For those of you who are okay with a slight spoiler, I'll tell you something about my favorite scene in the movie. Stop watching now if you don't want to know anything. All of the women in the movie are realistic, with strengths and weaknesses. One in particular shares one of my own weaknesses. She can't drive. There's this big chase scene in Rome, and for part of it, she's behind the wheel with Ethan trying to talk her through pursuit driving while she barely knows how to stay on the road. It was great. I leaned over my husband and said, It's me in a car chase! For the record, he agreed. <laughs> there are other great scenes, but that one was it's just special. Thanks for watching. Do you plan to see the new Mission Impossible, or have you already seen it? Let me know in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that bell for notifications, and I will catch up with you next time.